Cause he was way behind and he was willing to make a deal When he came across this young man Saw on a fiddle and playing it hot And the devil jumped up on a hickory stump And said, boy, let me tell you what I guess you didn't know it But I'm a fiddle player too And if you care to take a dare I'll make a bet with you Now you play pretty good fiddle, boy But give the devil his due I bet a fiddle of gold against your soul Cause I think I'm better than you the boy said, my name's Johnny, and it might be a sin, but I'll take your bet, you're gonna regret, cause I'm the best that's ever been. Johnny, rising up your bow and play your fiddle. Hey guys and gals, Love to Fly Hellies here. Uh, hello to all my YouTube buddies out there. Um, got a little project here I'm just kind of tinkering with right now. Uh, I, my next big build is gonna be my Edge 540, but I got one here I've been kind of playing with. Uh, my Sequoia SU-31, uh, most of you have seen the videos I went through five of them this will be the little red devil number six I need to tell you a little story about how this got started when I first got into this hobby I learned to fly I taught myself how to fly on a little 36 inch wingspan styrofoam uh, fly zone uh, Cessna 182 I went through three or four of those and moved up to a little top wing uh, same thing a little styrofoam Piper Cub and I taught myself to fly with those planes and then uh, by the time I learned to take off and land on this little stretch of pavement over here a little road bias uh, I thought I was pretty cocky so I liked the looks of this SU-31 so I just ordered it well I built it put it all together and uh, I showed up over at uh, the flying club at Ozark Flyers Club where I had just signed up and they'd been a big help to me and I set my plane down there and put the wings on it and there's two or three guys sitting there and one of them finally spoke up and he said uh, have you flown that yet and I said no I haven't I'm going to today and made and fly it and they sat there a little bit longer and he said well isn't that a little above your skill level and uh, I said well I don't know is it and they said yeah it's, it's terrible it's a hard plane to fly and land anyway long story short uh, I made four flights with it before I killed it. Split the fuselage in half. Uh, so I ordered a new fuselage, put it back together, <clears throat> and at this point it's it's not the little red devil, it's just a Sequoia SU-31. Uh, put a second fuselage on it, made two more flights over at the cow pasture at Huntsville, tip stalled it over there, killed it again. So this time I bought a whole nother kit, <clears throat> which comes up to little devil number three, at this point, my wife has given me heck over this thing. She's like, this this plane is possessed. It's it's just the devil. You you need to not get another one of those. You can't fly, you know. You, you can't even get five flights out of it. You're tearing them up, blah, blah, blah. It's just the devil. So, started out as a joke. Uh, she said, it, you know, it's just a little devil. Well, my friend Billy and I were talking about it at work one day. And he, I have a lady in... Reno, Nevada, or near there, that used to car hand carve all my pilot figures. Uh, she has says quit. Her hands are she just can't work. She can't carve anymore. But she did a extremely excellent job on these pilots. So Billy says, "Well, contact Nev and see if she can make you a little devil pilot." So I emailed her, and sure enough, she says, "Yeah, I can do that." So she actually made me three of them. This one's kind of a cartoony little guy. She does an extremely well job carving and painting these things. They're out of balsa, so they don't weigh anything. It was a bobblehead. I took the spring out, put a shaft up through there, and made it uh, swivel. You can hook it to a Y harness to your ailerons or hook it with a Y harness to your rudder, whichever, and it makes his head turn when you move your control surfaces. So, little uh, the Sequoia SU 31, uh, so it was born the Little Red Devil. I ordered graphics from my friend at uh, Bad Brad Graphics that said Little Red Devil and had a little cartoon devil that went down the side of the plane. And number three, uh, trying to think when I killed it, but anyway, I killed it. 
<clears throat> one of them I drove in the ground straight down at 80 miles an hour and just destroyed it. But anyway, went back up then to Little Devil number four. Uh, had the little guy in it, the little pilot. I took off. I was by myself. Took off to the southeast. Started circling back around to the west. It was diving real heavy and pulling hard to the right or left. I think the right. So I was trying to trim it keep control of it I needed somebody there to help me anyway long story short on that it ended up on top of a mountain a half a mile away we had to wait till the next day and we hiked about a mile up from the other side and finally found the debris and got my engine and stuff out of it <clears throat> so uh, I bought one more little level number five and I swore that was gonna be the last one if this one didn't make it I would never buy another one it actually got about 20 flights on it uh, there's a video on, on YouTube that where we crashed it a year or so ago, uh, last year in the spring, I believe. My wife was flying it on the buddy box, doing extremely well, and something happened. I don't know what, but I tried to take it. I had no control. It just spiraled into the ground. So there went little devil number five. Well, I said I wasn't going to buy any more. Well, my friends have given me such a hard time. Oh, you got to keep it going. you got to keep it going. It's kind of a thing now. So here we are, little devil number six. And uh, I'm fixing to start building this thing. I had an OS 46AX on the other one and it screamed. I'm putting a 55AX on this one so it, when it hits the ground it'll hit even harder. So I uh, put my little pilot back in him and got all my servos laid out here. We're fixing to unbox it and start tinkering with it. But just want to kind of tell you a little story behind that. So sometime uh, in the next couple months or so we'll get the maiden flight of little devil number six. <laughs> little red devil number six. We'll see how that one goes. Maybe I can make it last more than 20 flights. I don't know. It, it is a hard plane to land. You have to fly it to the ground pretty hot. It, it has a very high tip stall rate. If you slow it down the least little bit, it just starts wobbling. And by the time you got your second wobble, it's gone. It just falls to the ground. So it, it is a difficult plane to fly. I don't know about the big SU-31s and SU-26s, but this one is, is terrible. It's a Phoenix models. But anyway, we're going to get started on it and see what we can do with this thing. Okay. I'll get her out of the box here. Uh, tape all undone. This thing's taped in here pretty good. So they don't get damaged. Alright. Oh, goodness. Get this loose. May have to cut this one over here. There we go. Okay. There we got the tail section I'll tape it up here that apart I, I don't even need a manual to build this thing anymore because I've built uh, this will be my sixth one <laughs> pretty much I love the plane it, it's a sweet flying plane uh, very acrobatic but uh, it definitely is a handful and I wish we could figure out what happened to number five but the wreckage had no linkage broke loose, the battery had juice, we just have no idea what happened on it. Uh, one thing on this model, if you buy it, you're going to want to do, oh wait, this tape is terrible. The bottom and the top of the wing are identical. I usually take my bottom and either checker it with some clear black, which makes it yellow black, uh, or something like that. You know, you're going to want to color this bottom a different color because it is identical top and bottom and you get out there very far and flip it over inverted or into a loop or something you, you can't tell which, which is which. <coughs> so that's one thing I'll do. Uh, ailerons, elevator and stuff are pre-hinged already put together. They have a good solid metal uh, hinges or not metal, uh, plastic hinges in these things. Uh, I'm really surprised. It, Phoenix model is kind of a lower grade but it's built really well. Uh, most of them. The only drawback, oh wow, this is cool. They have improved it. Okay, here's a little tip. The first five that I had, the bottom of the fuselage was cut out so that the wing set up in there. Well, that created a weak spot right here. You only had from here to here a wood structure. You only had about an inch and a half, two inches of wood. And that was a weak spot. Any hard landing, it would fracture that fuselage right in half. They have improved that. Now they have a full-bodied fuselage. 
and it looks like the wings set into a cavity right here maybe and it's got a aluminum tube that goes through there the other ones didn't have that the wing was a one piece you glued it all together and it just made a very weak spot on that fuselage so I'm really proud to see that oh, that's awesome I didn't know they had done that so this should be a stronger stronger built fuselage anyway got all the goodies in here <coughs> Wheel tank and everything. Wheel pants. They've improved the wheel pants also. They have made a socket on the back side of them here for your landing gear to fit into. That wasn't there before. They were just flat like this side and you had to cut slots and stuff. So they've, they've made some really nice improvements to this plane since the last one I've had. I'm, I'm liking what I'm seeing here. Awesome. So anyway, we've got it all out of the box. Everything's here. So well, we'll get started putting this thing together. Okay, um, like I said, I told you the bottom and the top of the wing are identical, red and yellow. Uh, the only difference is the top will have a decal if I choose to put them on there. Um, so what I'm going to do, I didn't have enough checkering to do this, and <laughs> with the history of this plane not lasting too long, I don't want to put a whole lot into it. So what I'm going to do, I have some red covering. I'm just going to take this red and cover the rest of the bottom of it so the whole bottom will be solid red. Except I think I'll leave the aileron yellow, but I'm going to do the whole rest of it red so that it, when it's out there in the air, I, I can tell one side from the other. So to do that, uh, what I'm going to do, I measured, I'm just going to seam it to right here. If I get that seam no, nice and clean, it should hold. Normally you want to overlap this layer to here but I'm just going to butt it up there. I, I've done it before not having trouble. As long as you clean it really really good with alcohol. Uh, so we'll measure the yellow at the widest point. So it's nine and an eighth. So I'm going to go uh, I'm going to go nine and three eighths to give me a little bit of slack down here on this end. And we'll cut that piece. Let me get the rubber band off of here. Okay. Now what I'm going to do, let's see, oh, oh look at that, this roll is going to be perfect length to fit the whole thing all the way down. So all I need to do is cut a piece, nine and a half, or nine and three eighths. This edge here is a little ragged, I hope it's straight, <laughs> not real sure, but I'll use my small ruler, I'll mark nine three-eighths just make me a little black mark do the same thing over here nine and one two three-eighths now I can take my three-foot metal yardstick is what you'll need for this piece of cardboard or some kind of foam or something to lay your, your paper on your covering. Um, let's see. I'm going to put a new blade in this thing because you want a very, very sharp uh, new blade to uh, cut this with so it doesn't tear. Let me get that done right quick. This is another one of my perks from the dental business. This is actually a, a knife handle. This is a $23 handle. They're not worth that, but that's what they are. It's a little surgical hand. It's what I use in my dental business in the lab, but I had some extra ones, and I, I get a box of these blades, uh, $10 for a hundred of them. You go to Hobby Lobby or a Hobby Shop or something, you'll pay $8 for a dozen of the Exactos, and these work just as well, so I like them really good. Let's see. Let me... See if I can get this on here without cutting my fingers off. Always use a pair of pliers to snap it down on there. Okay, we're good. Brand new blade. Now, I'm going to stand up here because I want to look over the top of this. I'm going to center it on my marks. Like I said, I've got a little extra here. Keep your fingers back away from this. You slice down through there, you'll cut the end of your finger off because this is very, very sharp. Hold pressure on your ruler and just slide your blade real gently right down that and as you go on down you can move your hand down to hold pressure and that will cut it just slick as a whistle 
Uh oh. All right, now, um, one thing we're gonna have to do, is this, this has a clear piece of plastic sticking out on the edge of it, so, actually, let me see, I may only have to cut one end off. See how it's gonna fit. This color almost matches perfect, slightly darker. I don't care about that. Nope, if I trim it, it's gonna be right on the money. So, alright, I'm going to trim the plastic, clear plastic off of both ends. I'll do that with, you can do it with a razor knife or scissors. It's almost easier to do it with the, with the razor knife. Just put it on there. Mark your edge. Do the same thing. Just, it's, made, it's put on there so you can separate the sheets easy. But just remember which is top and the bottom. Your bottom will usually have a dull finish to it and the top will be more shiny. Let's get that all cut off. Alright. Right on the edge. I don't want to take any of the red. I don't want to get rid of the clear. Okay. Got those. Now. Now what I got to do. I'll have to take a break for a minute. And heat up my irons. Which I forgot to do. I should have already done. So let me get them plugged up and heated up. And we'll be back. Put the covering on this. Okay, uh, fill your backing back. You can take a razor knife. I use a dull one. Just kind of peel back the corner. And then that plastic coating will peel right off. Right over there for now. Alright, I want my good straight edge up here. This has adhesive on the back of it, so let's see if we can get this halfway lined up here. I believe that is going to do it. I'm going to take my iron, start that up here on this end, work my way down this seam. It doesn't blow out on me. No wrinkles. Okay. Now, we'll work our way down the center here. I don't want to get that one against my wing. It'll melt it. There's a lot of little wrinkles in here, but we'll get those out with the gun here in a minute. Right. I really want to make sure that seam is down good. We don't want any air getting under it. And I'll have to check it periodically. Like I said, I'm going to leave my aileron off. I'm not going to heat it down to that. And I want to catch every one of these ribs down through here. Make sure it sticks to that. All along this edge real good. wrinkle right there I don't like but I'll see if I can get it out okay the edge is all down now we'll take our sharp razor knife and Trim off this edge right here. Just ride right against that. Follow this seam. Okay, now we'll take this piece off. We can save that for smaller areas or patches here in a little bit. Okay. 
you know, get this corner here cleaned up. Okay. Now I'm going to take this little small iron and we're going to press down the edges with it. It really makes it seal good. We want it good and snug. We don't want any air or fuel getting under this to make it come loose. So any, uh, any edge here, we'll stick it down really good. Little iron is nice because you can get down in these gaps between the ailerons, <coughs> control surfaces, and stuff. Seal that edge down really good. All the way along there. Now, <coughs> looks like we got just a little bit right here. I'll take my razor knife. And heat this tip down. Get that started. There we go. It'll just shave that right off of there. Now we'll heat this edge down. We got all the edges nice and tight. We'll go along this seam up here at the top. Make sure that's all down good. All right, now. Uh, one more thing around the servo tray opening. I want to make sure that's done really good along that edge. Looks to be okay. Now we're going to take a blow gun. Let me find my new one there. Try to get some of these wrinkles out of here. You may have to take your razor knife and pop some of these big bubbles. Let the air out. You get a lot of those when you lay it on top of existing covering just poke your tip in there though and it'll just tighten those right up
thing is our seam is tight. Kind of pulled away just a little up here. I don't go on this thing getting hot. Uh, from this one edge, but I don't care. It's just mainly I just wanted the bottom of it mostly all one color. So I got a little bit of it's pulled the iron made it pull back right there, but oh well. Like I said I don't expect this thing to last that long anyway. So anyway, that's how we do that. And that way you can tell top from the bottom pretty easy. You got all I should go ahead and do the aileron, but I'm not going to mess with it. I'll just leave it. So, All right, we'll do the other wing, and then we'll start putting the servos and stuff in.